Hi everyone. Um, I just kind of wanted to give an update on our book reading because that's the main thing that we've been working on. And uh, Ryan and I have both finished a book each. And we actually have four books that we need to read between us. Um, so two of them are the same. Two, two of the books we have to read are the same. Um, and then the third book I can read and the fourth book he can read. So we've kind of split it up like that. Um, so it's three books each and four all together. Anyway, um, we finished our first one and we're both checking through our second. And the reading has actually been really beneficial. Um, we're actually really enjoying our reading. So I kind of wanted to share just a little bit about what I'm learning in my book. I'm My book right now is The Open Adoption Experience and I felt like this is just a lot of nuts and bolts. Um, the Dear Birth Mother book was very much um, getting the mindset, getting um, your emotions wrapped around the idea of um, birth parents and how that relates to you, um, which I felt like I was already there emotionally and wanted to connect with the birth mother and birth father if he's available um, to some degree. But this has been really helpful for just, um, you know, this is probably what your first meeting is like, and this is what she'll be thinking, and this is what you'll be thinking, and um, just very down-to-earth practical, um, in my opinion. And I would recommend it for anybody who's considering adoption or um, even family members of people who are going through adoption. Um, it's It seems like, like a decent sized book, but it breaks it up in parts that are totally doable. And, um, and I, I just think it's great. So I did want to share a little bit. Um, the first bit that I wanted to share was um, they gave a kind of analogy of adoption and the relationship between adoptive parents and birth parents. Um, and it has been, that relationship has been compared to like a first date or like a blind date that um, you don't know each other, you're both kind of awkward, just kind of get to know you, ask questions, and it's just kind of awkward. Um, but they suggest, um, the authors suggest that it is more like meeting your in-laws on your wedding day. Um, and so they just kind of went into this analogy of how oftentimes people don't meet their in-laws until they get married or engaged. And at that point, there's already a commitment made between um, the parties involved. So, um, for example, for me, if I were to have just met Brent and Teresa, uh, Ryan's parents, when we got married, it wouldn't matter if we had different types of lifestyles, if we saw things differently, um, if you know we, we disagreed on certain things, and it, none of that would really matter because we would both be determined to make some form of relationship work because we both love Ryan. And comparing that to adoption, you've got a birth family and an adoptive family. And there's a commitment to the child that's involved. You both love the child. And so it's just a matter of making that commitment and letting the um, relationship kind of slowly develop after you've already made that commitment. Because we don't really have the luxury of spending a lot of time together and developing a friendship the way a normal relationship would be. So anyway, I just thought that was a great um, way to put it and a great way to think about it. Um, so that was one thing that I really liked. Um, the other one was, I'm actually going to read a quote here because I just thought it was great. Um, the perspective uh, on the birth father. Um, there are a lot of stereotypes regarding the birth mother, what type of a girl she is or a woman she is, um, but there's a lot of stereotypes about the birth father as well. Um, he's typically not entirely involved in the process, and so I think a lot of people just assume that he's just 
typically just a deadbeat guy that um, that took off once he found out that he got his girlfriend pregnant. Um, but anyway, I, I just want to read this and just kind of um, let it speak for itself here. Um, in most cases, the birth father doesn't want to be a disruptive influence. He simply isn't sure what his role should be. And this shouldn't be a surprise. Our culture gives men mixed messages about their rights and responsibilities when they aren't married to the mothers of their children. We want them to take re equal responsibility for the pregnancy, but we aren't sure that they should have the right to prevent the birth mother from placing a child for adoption. We indicate to the birth father that if he doesn't intend to marry the birth mother, he has no right to tell her what to do. And then we criticize him for abandoning her to deal with the pregnancy herself. So it's not surprising that the birth father who wants to take some responsibility for the pregnancy or somehow be involved in the child's life might express that desire in unskilled ways. So that could either be um, just walking away from the situation because he doesn't know exactly how to handle it, um, even displaying that in, in anger or um, reluctance to the whole idea. Um, or just being, you know, rude at meetings, whatever, whatever the case may be, um, he's probably just misunderstood and doesn't really know what to do. So that was really helpful for me because I haven't really gotten too much perspective from the birth father's side of things. Um, even I, I will admit, even you know, not necessarily, and not necessarily wanting him around because that will just make the process easier for me. And I think that that's a wrong way to look at it. And um, it will be important to the child to know who their birth father is and what he was like. And um, so I should want him to be involved. And furthermore, I should want to help him deal with whatever grief um, that he has in whatever way I can. So anyway, that was, that was um, a really neat little gem for me too. So I'm only on the sixth chapter of this book, but I was just loving it so much that I thought that I wanted to, to share a little bit before I get too far in. So I'll probably have another couple updates and I'm hoping that Ryan will do one too, um, just to say what he's learning. But anyway, that's it.